Congratulations! You've made it. You've survived Black Friday. Boy, oh boy, it's rough out there. But if you're watching, I know you've conquered it. Well done, and on we go to the tech news. Today, or sometime in the past 24 hours anyways, benchmarks for the Intel Core i3-7350K showed up online from Geekbench, and they're looking good for an i3, anyways. This dual-core 4.2 GHz CPU will be part of the Kaby Lake lineup and the first i3 chip with overclocking capabilities. Single-core score from Geekbench shows 5,137, and multi-core shows 10,048. For comparison, the previous i3 had 4,033 and 7,555, respectively. But the i3-7350 even beats out most of Intel's current i5 chips, both in single and multi-core. This will be available for $177 US and the future is looking bright guys. Now I have to check if this is better than my i5 at home. I mean, I should probably have an i7, but maybe I'll get the i3 now. But probably not. Still sounds good though. Researchers from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands have discovered a new use for the wonder material graphene. What is graphene? It's it's this it's this stuff. Um Describing it with words though, it's a sheet of pure carbon just a single atom thick and these researchers found a way to make it bubble, creating a color change in the graphene as it expands and contracts. Scientists say that these mechanical pixels could eventually make screens that are more flexible, durable, and energy efficient than current LED technology. These were created by working with panels of silicon oxide covered with two sheets of graphene. The silicon pockmarked with holes had graphene stretched across the cavities. Bubbles of graphene and changed colors depending on the pressure inside the cavities and how light refracted through them. Anyways, this is pretty early for this technology and there are a lot of limitations still, but it will be interesting to see where this goes. There's a lot more info, so uh, check the sources down below for that. And um, the researchers are actually planning to show this off, a, a prototype, in March, so... We'll wait for that. Keys talked about the Steam Awards the other day, suggesting that Valve should give themselves an award to make Half-Life 3 already, or something that doesn't really make sense. But indeed, since Valve allowed people to vote on an awards category, the people spoke and voted for the Game That Deserves a Sequel Award, taking this opportunity to let Valve know that people actually do want Half-Life 3. Wait, what? That's right, the Half-Life subreddit got the ball rolling with a post that influenced people to go and vote on Steam. The post has received a lot of support and they may just get Valve to get going on something after a nine year hiatus. Half-Life 3 confirmed? Question mark? That's pretty high. It's time for... Joshua Spann, it is freezing out. This is more news stories said more quickly than the others. Thank you, Gabe. It's actually um, shorter news stories, but I mean, it's all the same. I, it, that was great stuff. I played trumpet in high school as well, so good on you, my friend. Uh, march that band to victory with your trumpeteering skills, yes. Uh, if you would like to submit a thing like that, send me a Twitter. Nope, that, on that side. I always put it on that side. I can't put it on the, uh, on the other side. What's that side? So. Uh, click, click Twitter there. Ah! SpaceX has been given a contract to launch a NASA satellite in 2021. The SWAT, Surface Water and Ocean Topography Mission, will use a Falcon 9 rocket to take research hardware into orbit where NASA will conduct the first ever global survey of Earth's surface water to understand how our oceans change over time. Okay, sounds good. No Man's Sky is getting its first update in over two months and the developers promised that, oh, this is the start of something amazing. This is going to change everything. You'll see. <sighs> Tesla hired one HoloLens developer and now they're hiring another developer, Andrew Kim, who was a senior designer for the HoloLens project. People believe that these are some pretty big clues that Tesla is working on augmented reality features for its upcoming vehicles. Japanese mobile carrier SoftBank is amping up the release of Rogue One with Star Wars smartphones. There are dark side and light side editions and they look pretty awesome. If you're a huge nerd, <laughs> so, so dumb. <laughs> Those look so stupid, man. And yesterday, Ubisoft launched 30 days of giveaways, so go and buy some uh, Ubisoft games if, if that's what you want to do. Sources for all of today's stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description.
What happens to the nitrogen in the air when the sun comes out in the morning? It becomes daytrogen. Black Friday week is on at NCIX. Yes, Friday on the week of Black Friday is actually a full week. So don't say Saturday tomorrow like a big dummy. In Canada, we've got a BenQ 35 inch 144 Hertz curved ultra wide gaming monitor for $799.99. That's a savings of $355. There's also the Logitech Proteus Spectrum gaming mouse for $64.98, which is a savings of $55. In the US, there's the Gigabyte G GeForce GTX 1060 for $209.99, which is a saving of $75, as well as an Intel Core i7-6700K processor for $299.99, which is a savings of $70. And guys, there's over a thousand deals we've got going, and we're refreshing them every day. So check back as much as possible until next Wednesday. And don't forget about Cyber Monday, this coming Monday. Make sure to check back uh, for that as well. So, uh... Click um, here or in the description for all the details on all this stuff. All right, that's it for Netlink Daily. Thank you so much for watching. You can click over here for previous videos and, uh, and like the video and uh, comment below for fans with benefits, subscribe and all that uh, great stuff. Uh, anyways, fun fact, I broke my elbow. Anyways, I gotta go.